Okay, so we've been talking a lot about chemical formulas for the past few months, and we know how to write them out and how to identify the name of those chemical formulas, but now we're just going to talk about simplifying them, essentially. Okay, you need to know the difference between an empirical formula and a molecular formula. We're going to start with empirical first. I want you to write that empirical formulas... are just the simplified formulas. Another way of saying this is calling it the base ratio. The word ratio should look familiar from whatever math class you've taken. Okay, it's essentially a fraction. For every one thing, you have a certain amount of another um, Whenever I say base ratio, I expect you to know that I'm talking about empirical formulas, okay? Simplified versions. So we're going to write example problems up on the board. Make sure you're writing this down, please. Okay, a question might ask you on the quiz or test, what is the empirical formula for glucose, which is C6H12O6? When it asks you for the empirical formula, you are simplifying what is given to you. So we're essentially doing what we just did for the warm-up. We're going to look at each of those subscripts given to us. And I'm going to ask myself, what is the biggest number that they have in common? Six. six. Do we all see how six is the biggest number they have in common? So I'm going to divide each of them by six in order to get my new subscripts for my simplified formula. So if 6 is divided by 6, just looking at carbon, what would my new subscript be? 1, but do we ever write the 1? No. no. So it's going to be just C by itself. What about H? What is going to be the subscript for H? 2. And what about O? There won't be a subscript. Right. Just O. Perfect. So that would be the empirical formula for glucose. That makes sense? It will sometimes try to trick you. Not really a big deal or anything, but you need to always ask yourself, can it be simplified? Because sometimes it might give you this. It might say, what's the empirical formula for CH2O? And that's already simplified as much as it possibly can be, right? So you would simply pick that one or just say you can't simplify it anymore. Does that make sense? Okay, be mindful of that. It also might give you... Something that looks a little crazy, like this. So what is the empirical formula for HC2H3O2? Okay, if it ever gives you something that looks a little crazy or chaotic, I want you counting how many of each thing you have. I want you to write the most simple version of this first, okay? So how many C's do I have here? Two. Two. How many H's do I have? Four. I have four total H's. I have three right here and one right here. So I have a total of four. Are we following along with that? How many O's do I have? Two. Perfect. So this is just a more simplified version of this. Now I have to ask myself, can this be simplified? Right? Mm -hmm. Can it? Yes. What is the number they all have in common? Two. Two. So I'm dividing each of these by two to get my new subscripts. What would my final formula be? C H H O. Okay, exactly what I got up there the first time. Yes? How did you get the four from three? There's three here, right? Mm -hmm. But there's also this one over here. Oh. So I have a total of four. Yeah, okay. That makes sense? Yeah, I so I only want you doing this if you see something crazy, like multiples of elements or something like that, because it will try to trip you up like that. Write it like this first, and then see if you can simplify. Yes? Why would the C go to the H? Easiest that way. And when we think of like hydrocarbons mm -hmm. that we learned about last semester, that's how they're written. Carbon's just always written first. But if it really helps you, do it whatever way you need to. <clears throat> Any other questions? All right. Um, let's go to molecular real quick. So molecular is just the opposite.
So it is an unsimplified formula. So if it asked for the empirical, we were dividing, we were simplifying. Now if it's asking us for molecular, we are multiplying, okay? Easy way to remember that is they both start with M, molecular and multiplying. An example problem, when it's asking for molecular, it might say, what is a possible molecular formula or CH3. So it will always give you the empirical formula when it's asking for molecular's, all right? So if this is my empirical, I have to tell what a potential molecular would be and I could multiply it by anything. So if it's a free response question, you can take this and multiply it by whatever number you want. Let's say I multiply it by 2. That means I'm multiplying each thing by 2. So what would be my empirical formula that's multiplied by 2? What would it be written as? C2H6. Do we see that? We're going opposite of what we just did. So you know how we were dividing each thing? Now we're going to be multiplying by each thing. Mm -hmm. If you chose to multiply it by 3, what would my molecular formula be? C3. H9. H9. Okay, do we see how both of these can be simplified into CH3? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's either way, but these are the molecular formulas. We following? Any questions? So it doesn't matter what I choose? No. If it's free response. Like, if it said just give me a possible one, oh, okay. you could do that. However, if it gave you multiple choice... Let's say it gave you A, B, and C. I would have to see which of these options is an actual representation of a molecular formula for that. So this, best way to do this is process of elimination, honestly. Just seeing which answer fits. So like if I look at my first one, I see that C, it was not multiplied by anything, right? So that means if H wasn't multiplied by anything, this should be 3, not 8. Do we see that? Mm -hmm. So I know that that is not my answer choice. If I look at B, what was C multiplied by? 2. 2. So if H was multiplied by 2, what should my H have been? 6. 6. This says 12. So I know that that's not correct. Does that make sense? If I look at my last one, it says C was multiplied by 8, right? So if H was multiplied by 8, what should my H be? 24. So this would be my answer. Give me a thumbs up if you're following. Give me a this if you are confused. All right. So I'm going to give you all a practice worksheet. 